Hello and welcome to another edition of Lincoln Pride Television. I'm Kirsten Davis. And I'm McKenna Murray. Veterans Day honors those who have served our country. ROTC Color Guard celebrated U.S. veterans and has been celebrating them for over a decade now. Let's go to Taylor Bever and Logan Pruitt for more on Veterans Day. What do you do to support our veterans on Veterans Day? Abraham Lincoln ROTC Color Guard goes around Council Bluff supporting. This year they went to Hy-Vee on Madison Avenue, Iowa Western, Bethany Lutheran Home, and Lewis Central. My name is John Shuffler and I'm a senior at the moment. So I've enjoyed it for a long time now. Obviously that's why I was kept with it. At first when I joined ROTC I didn't think Color Guard was going to be the main thing I was going to be in. I thought I was going to be mostly in the rifle team and dealing with them. But as years progressed on I actually tra transitioned into Color Guard. Abraham Lincoln ROTC Color Guard has been going around on Veterans Day for a little over a decade now. They did a great job. This is Taylor Bever reporting to you from LPTV. With the holidays right around the corner, many families are in need of food. To help these families, DECA held a canned food drive. Here are Kaylee Hartenhoff and Clayton Ramsdell with the story. The holiday season is fast approaching. DECA has had a week dedicated to giving back to community by collecting cans of food and having a hat day in which the proceeds will go to Brooklyn's Journey. Brooklyn's Journey is um, a little girl who's about, she's going to be two, um, and she got diagnosed with a lymphoma, and so we're donating the money towards her. Mrs. Nicole Eisen advises DECA as they run the school food drive. This year we're, we're um, partnering with TAG, and they will help us collect the food and load it onto a truck to take it to the community food pantry. Um, it just gives people some needed food throughout Thanksgiving and Christmas. They'll do baskets. They can come in and get food from the food pantry to use for their holidays. So it's just something that we think um, is a worthy cause, and it's a civic consciousness project for us, and it's one of the things that we try to do every year. Those who participated in DECA's activities have given back to the community. The recipients of these donations are extremely appreciative and grateful. With photographer Clayton Ramsdale, I'm Kaylee Hartenhoff reporting for LPTV. Looking for a job isn't easy, but the Grow CB program makes it just a little easier. Many businesses came out to AL to interview students looking for jobs. Nolan Drescher and Nick Perry have the story. Here at the CB Job Fair, students from all over the district came in hoping of getting a job. From businesses ranging from Hy-Vee, Walgreens, Pizza Ranch, and more, there are many opportunities to get a job. Grow CB was an opportunity for students that are willing to maintain regular school attendance, have a minimum 2.0 GPA, and are on track to graduate to talk to employers for a chance to get a job. Um, our biggest thing is we went, kids were outgoing, um, responsible. Um, we actually like it when students are involved in a lot of different things. Um, we're very flexible when it comes to the hours that we need, uh, but when someone's involved in a lot of activities, um, that usually shows them about their character, shows they're outgoing, they like to be involved, um, they're responsible, they can manage their time well. Um, so that really means a lot in terms of what we do. We've got a lot of people that have come up um, kind of through the ranks that started off, you know, when they were in high school, um, stay with us, become supervisors, some into management. Um, so we like to give the same opportunities to some of the younger kids today. You know, I think the big thing um, is continue to practice doing some of these interviews and stuff. Um, getting out there, talking to people, getting comfortable, talking to people that you don't know, putting yourself in those situations that aren't necessarily intuitive really helps. Um, that way when they do these interviews, it's just kind of second nature to them. Thank you. With cameraman Nick Perry, I'm Nolan Drescher reporting for LPTV. This week we had a lot of fun going to Midlands Humane Society for our Pets of the Week. I really loved meeting Sadie. She was very playful and fun to be around. Roll it! This week at Midlands, we looked at a cuddly cat and an energetic dog. Tom is a one and a half year old domestic medium hair cat who is very curious. He does take a short while to adapt to new people, but once he's comfortable with you, he is loving. These adorable kittens will be available in a little more than a week. 
Sadie is a five-year-old Catawala. She is very active and will be until she's almost 12 years old. Her energy is very playful and loving. Reporting for LPTV, I'm McKenna Murray, and don't forget to look for our next Pets of the Week. Nothing beats homemade pumpkin pie and family time on Thanksgiving. Plus great shopping deals and having a chance to sleep in. Here are Jamie Schiller and Alana Baskey with more on all things Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving isn't always about the food, but being thankful for what you have and spending time with your family and friends. I'm definitely thankful for my grandpa this year because he had a heart attack last summer and so we're just, everyone's just so glad that he's alive and we can spend another Thanksgiving with him. Students at AL are also looking forward to Black Friday shopping. Some of the stores are even opening on Thanksgiving Day. Um, last year I didn't get to go Black Friday shopping so probably just going with my family this year. Spending time with family is the most important thing for most students. Uh, for Thanksgiving, I'm going to spend it with my close family, like my mom and dad and my sisters. I'm Jamie Schiller with photographer Alana Baskew reporting for LPTV. Getting up in the morning can be quite a struggle, especially when you have to be up around 6 every day. I know that I can't start my day without coffee, and it seems our teachers can't either. Here are Jesse Borwick and Austin Clare on how the teachers get pumped up for school. Ready for the day. Yeah, uh, I wake up. Uh, my alarm goes off at 6:15 every day. I lay in bed till 6:30. Uh, I'm at school by like 7:15, and so the first thing I do, I have to shower every single morning. Mm -hmm. If I don't shower, my day is completely thrown off. Um, I wake up and I turn the news on and I just take a shower and start thinking about the the morning ahead, and always have a cup of coffee. Um, I I like to pour a giant bowl of Kix cereal. Mother approved, kid tested. Love those kicks. And then I usually play a, little, play a little Candy Crush in the morning while I eat my cereal. And then, of course, you know, I'm a big advocate of coffee on the way to work. In the uh, on my way to work, I usually listen to a lot of 90s alternative grunge stuff, a lot of Alice in Chains and Soundgarden. It's kind of some, the teen angst kind of thing, I think, to get in the mindset. Uh, One Direction, because it is really upbeat and it makes me happy and it's kind of music you can dance around to, so then it gives me energy to dance around while I'm teaching, I guess. It's probably like iTunes radio is what I'll put on, and I have a pretty short commute to work, so it'll just be like a talk show radio in the morning. Uh, that's the fun part of it, knowing that I'm gonna have different kids every day. You know, they come in with different views, different attitudes. You know, the same student is not gonna be the same every single day. They're gonna have, they're gonna be upset one day, happy one day. It's just that's what I love about about teaching is just the the not knowing what's gonna happen when when we walk through that door every day. Well, the first step is to determine what it is you want them to actually learn. Okay. Okay. And then of course we have the district curriculum. What else you need? Hey Kirsten, wasn't your friend Kendall on the art show? Yes, she was showcasing her talent along with many other students. Here's Clayton Ramsdell with more on the art show. On Tuesday, November 10th, the CBCSD Education Offices held an annual art show at this event, there are art pieces from schools all over the district and small ensembles and solos from the middle schools and high school band. The art show brought in many viewers. This made the creators of these masterpieces proud of their work. Ashley and two other AL students made what she calls the door of opportunity. We used our hands for the splatter and we painted some of it too. Kendall is also proud of her art and used many different approaches for creating her dragon. It's, it's a western dragon and not an eastern dragon, like there's two different types. And a lot of people don't know what they are, like how different they are. And I guess the technique I use is I just look at like a really small screen and I copy that onto like, I enlarge it and then I go over that with calligraphy ink and then I paint it with watercolor and acrylic. Art isn't just defined by drawing or painting. Music is also included. A handful of AL musicians played some music at the art show as well. 
These students really enjoy art. They intend to get better and better as time goes on. With photographers Jessica Borwick and Kaylee Hartenhoff, this is Clayton Ramsdale reporting for LPTV. When I go bowling, I get the proud score of 80. On average, of course. I think I should go out for the bowling team. McKenna, an 80 is a terrible score. If you want to go out for the bowling team, make sure to pay attention while Adam Ireland and Moses Morales give you a few tips on how to bowl. That's a wrap for this edition of Lincoln Pride Television. Look for our next show after Thanksgiving break. From all the staff at LPTV, thanks for watching.